if every tale of courage and strength on the African savanna crowns the Lion King of the Beast, its rival, the hyena, is left with a less than stellar image. Always the scavenger and villain, never the hero. Kevin Richardson is working hard to change that misconception. I think a lot of people know about the lion, but not enough is known about the hyena. The baby hyenas Kevin raises this year are destined to become ambassadors for their species. This little hyena is trying to dominate you. Oh. Together, their mission is to show the world that hyenas are intelligent, strong, and fearless predators to be respected, not maligned. But as Kevin is about to find out, rearing young hyenas can be an emotional roller coaster ride. Situated near Johannesburg, the Lion Park is home to over 100 lions who are definitely the star attraction for the thousands of tourists who visit each year. But the lion's closest rival is also represented at the park, but shares little of the limelight. These 20 spotted hyenas form one of the few captive clans in the world. Their unusual looks and skulking gait disguise a fierce and courageous hunter within. Although not endangered, hyenas face persecution in the wild and are often trapped or poisoned as human and hyena territories increasingly overlap. Kevin's mission is for the world to fall in love the way he has. Before I got onto hyenas, uh, the impression I had of, the, uh, of them was what I'd seen from obviously documentaries and television programs, and it was pretty much that they stinky, smelly scavengers. What's brought about that change in me, I think, is observation and the privilege of being able to work around these animals on a daily basis and realize that these, these animals are actually highly intelligent. Over the past six years, many of these special hyenas have been hand-raised by Kevin. He has the privilege of getting this close to the animal with the most impressive jaw strength in the animal kingdom. Two troublemakers. Huh? Kevin's bond is so strong, he's almost an honorary member of the clan. And anytime soon, they're expecting some new arrivals. Gina, Kevin's favorite, is due to give birth for the very first time. Are you talking to me? For any young female, first time me? birth is always risky, so Kevin is keeping a very close eye. She's just giving me a good sniff and a lick, and this is basically just mutual behavior, us greeting each other, saying, hello, how are you? When are you gonna have your cubs? The most amazing thing is she has the ability to literally rip my face to shreds if she wanted to. But as you can see, she's quite calm and relaxed, eh? She's almost at the end of her four-month-long pregnancy. Soon, Gina will give birth to a single cub or twins that Kevin hopes to raise. Come, Gina. I want it. Listen. Eh, hey, what's happening here? Eh? I think I can hear your cub kicking there. Come here, come into my lap here. Oh, that's my love. Now she's giving me love. Eh? Now you're giving me love. But there are no guarantees that Gina will deliver her cubs safely. Female hyenas endure exceptionally difficult births because they have unusually narrow birth canals. So we're expecting difficulties with Gina, but we're just gonna pan it out and see how it goes. And Gina has another problem. The clan is ruled by a dominant female named Uno. Top-ranking Uno has already had her cubs this season. So I think the risk involved here is how is she going to react to the second-in-command having cubs? For the moment, Uno's priority is mothering her new cub, Marge. 
but she may not tolerate a lower ranking female and her baby in the same enclosure. For now, Gina is safe, but Kevin will have to watch this volatile situation closely over the coming days. Kevin's latest ambassador in training is three-month-old Homer. Today, animal handler Helga van der Merve is doing her best to keep up with this exuberant little hyena. Life for this little guy is all about fun. He's the first hyena that, in fact, all my staff have liked. He's just a little character. He runs around causing nonsense wherever he goes, but he gets away with it because he's got that little cute face. Things haven't always been this easy for little Homer. He was separated from his mom, Uno, and sister, Marge, when he was just a few days old. Hyena cubs are born into a matriarchal society where females rank higher than males. With unusually high levels of testosterone, female cubs are larger and more aggressive, and they exert their dominance from the moment they're born. If there's a male and a female born with hyenas, typically the male will um, always submit to the female, even at that very young age. Baby hyenas are born with a full set of teeth, and they know how to use them. By repeatedly biting and harassing her brother, Homer's sister Marge made it impossible for him to feed. Remaining with the family would have meant certain death. Thanks to Kevin's intervention, Homer has the chance of leading a new life, a life as an ambassador for his species. He'll be returned to his clan when he's one year of age and old enough to fend for himself. Two weeks later, and Kevin is worried. Expectant mom Gina has still not given birth. Something is going on. It's quite strange because it goes through phases of her looking pregnant and then other phases where she looks a little bit leaner and today you definitely seem to be a little bit leaner, my girlie. Eh? Something going on here. Expectant father, waiting, except you won't tell me. Gina is now 12 days overdue. Kevin will give her just one more day before calling in the vet. Last couple of days, she's just been around the den entrance, which, and all the hyenas are in turmoil. They're all, all over the place. Una, have you been causing trouble? Huh? The worry is that this enclosure isn't big enough for um, two females to actually breed successfully. What's going on? What are you showing me? What are you showing me? Have you got a cub in there? Have you got a cub in there? What's going on? Gina's vigil by the den indicates she may have given birth. But Kevin's worst fears are about to be realized. Hey, what do you got there? Hey, hey, what you doing? Gina has had her cub. <laughs> this male's whooping is a warning. Uno has killed Gina's cub. Um, hey, get away. Got a bit of a problem here. Hey. His whooping beckons the rest of the clan. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> I'm lost for words, and this guy doesn't want to let me come near. Hey, Ed, calm down. Calm down, hey. Gina's maternal instinct to protect her dead cub is still strong. What's going on? What you talking to? What happened? What happened? Tensions are running high. What happened, my sweetie? Kevin will have to be careful. Come on. I don't know. Shh. Shh. No, Gina. Her reaction is a clear warning to keep away. Just give her some space. Give her some space, okay? You see how volatile the situation is. I mean, that, I think she thinks I've got something to do with what's actually going on here. And <laughs> I hope I haven't uh, spoilt my relationship with her. The loss of this cub 
is a double blow for Kevin. This little hyena was special because it's Gina. She's got a, a striking personality, and I was just looking forward to really spending time with her and her little one. This is the harsh reality of life in the hyena clan. After the death of Gina's cub, Kevin throws himself into the hand raising of three and a half month old Homer. Oh, that tastes good, yeah. To me, Homer is a great little guy. He's, you know, everything I could want in a little hyena. There's no doubt the rambunctious little hyena has stolen Kevin's heart. All hyenas have great personality, but this guy just goes that one step further. And I can see we're going to have a lifelong relationship. It's not going to just end there. Meanwhile, Homer's sister Marge is living a very different life among the adult hyenas. She's starting to leave her birth den for short periods and is learning her place within the clan. In contrast, Homer is growing up alone, away from other hyenas. So early contact with other animals is essential if Homer is ever to return to the clan. He's about to meet some unconventional and unlikely playmates. We don't have a, a litter of, of hyena cubs running around, so the next best thing is a lion cub. Even though the lion cubs are much bigger, Homer most definitely holds his own. And they get along like a house on fire, really, really amazing stuff. They compete for, for milk and for food, exactly as if he was just a litter mate. So Homer fits, fits right in. In the wild, hey. cubs of these two competing predators would never have the chance to interact. This mixed species playground is all about play fighting and dominating each other. Homer will need to master these vital skills before he's returned to his birth clan. Since the death of Gina's cub, life in the clan has finally calmed down again. Distraught at her loss, Gina had reacted badly to Kevin's intervention. This is old Gina who wanted to murder me a couple of weeks ago. Her aggression towards Kevin had been out of character. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, Gina. Gina. Kevin's now uncertain about their relationship. But although she seems wary, she's displaying no signs of aggression. Only interest in seeing her long lost okay. clanmate. Yeah. I think our relationship is strong enough. Um, we've been with her since she was a tiny cub. And she'd know that uh, I'm not out there to hurt her or her her cubs in the future. After some time and distance apart, Gina and Kevin are now reconciled. As the weeks go by, Kevin and Homer are inseparable. For Kevin, there's never been a hyena quite like Homer. <laughs> you know what you think? You know what you think? Yeah, look at you. You're growing so fast. Hey? This four and a half month old hyena is undergoing some dramatic changes. And you can see already from that chocolatey, chocolatey dark brown color, he's now getting all these little spots. His new markings are the spotted hyena's trademark. In the wild, a cub's dark coat is perfect for early life in the den, but provides no camouflage on the wheat colored grasslands. This spotty coat signals a new independence. Uh, that's a huge milestone for a hyena. It's a like kind of development from being molly coddled by mom, and now you're coming out of the den, and uh, now you've got to face reality, and that's the rest of the guys. <laughs> Getting spots is a sure sign of growing up. Next morning, Kevin receives a phone call from a game park. Desperate to find a home for two male yeah. hyena cubs. Huh? These new cubs no, will no, make no, welcome okay. additions to the Lion Especially Park's clan age, eh? of hyena so, ambassadors. <laughs> Always good news to get uh, two little critters back into the park, yeah. Later that day, 
Kevin's co-worker, Helga, brings the Cubs to the park to start their new lives. These one-month-old brothers were orphaned after their mother tragically died giving birth to them. Up until now, they've been hand-raised by the local vet. I think the plans at this stage for these two guys is hand-raise them because they're easier to manage and then at a later stage, see where they actually fit into the equation. Squealing cubs means just one thing, feeding time. Kevin prepares a formula of egg yolk, cream, and milk designed to replace mom's high-fat milk. Hyenas typically in the wild can go without milk for up to periods of even up to a week. Mom's special milk means she can leave her cubs for long periods while she goes in search of a meal. So when they do drink, they drink excessive amounts and uh, that generally sustains them for a, a long period of time. Thank you. <laughs> Raising these demanding babies is going to take both Kevin and Helga. Hello there. Hey, that's very really nice of you. You're coming friendly, huh? Eh? They'll need round-the-clock <laughs> feeding for the next five months. I don't think this one is hungry anymore. The new arrivals need names. Hello, little boy. What are we going to call you? Huh? You know, I've been thinking of some names, and uh, I don't know what you think of the names. Tika and Bongo. That's a nice name. You like? Yeah, I like. The names stick. Bongo and Tika, both meaning hyena in two different tribal languages. Right from the word go, Bongo is the dominant cub. It's quite cute to see this here, because we're in total control. If it gets a bit serious, I'll pull this guy away. Bongo's aggression towards spotty Tika doesn't let up. When one decides to pick on the other from day one, it can really hammer it to a degree where it restricts him from getting milk or anything to that effect. So, oh, shame! Hey, what you doing? That's horrible. Yeah, sibling. You meant to love thy brother. Not kill him. The new parents will need to keep a close eye on the brother's rivalry over the coming weeks. Today marks an important occasion for five-month-old Homer. Kevin is taking him for his first visit to see the clan. The drive past his hyena family will be the first step in his gradual reintroduction. The drive doubles as a good chance for Homer to take a good look at the park's other residents. As usual, he's taking it all in his stride. He's actually sleeping on the window. It's meant to be exciting, boy. Are you dosing? Are you sleeping? Homer finds things more interesting once they enter the clan. He's starting to catch wind of the scents of the hyenas. And already the hair in his neck is standing up. He's livened up. He's a lot more active. These are the first hyenas he's seen since he was rescued from his family. Here's his sister. Look at your sister, boy. Look at the size difference. It's quite a moment. Homer hasn't seen Marge since they were separated. Eh? Hey, look at that. She, too, has her spotty coat okay. and is now venturing further from okay. the den. Here's your sister. Look at that. I think you're bigger than her now. Eh? Hey? I think you're bigger than her. Over the next six months, Homer will be socialized with the clan from the safety of the car. By then, he should be strong enough to hold his own. But there'll always be a risk in returning this little male to the clan, ruled by females. Come look here, boy. A hyena, when he's too young, obviously can't be reintroduced because he'll be annihilated. And when he's too old, he's too set in his ways. Don't worry, my boy. That's enough for you. Don't want to totally terrorize him. Kevin will judge Homer's reintroduction carefully. In the nursery, the rivalry between six-week-old Bongo and Tika is worsening. From birth, Bongo has bullied Tika in an effort to establish higher ranking over his brother. Bongo is more the dominant one. We're giving Tika a little bit more affection than Bongo, and he gets really upset. So that's pure aggression. He wants to 
give Tika a hiding. Shame. Don't shame. Here he comes. We'll keep him away. For now, Tika needs all the help he can get. <laughs> While the brothers try their new teeth out on each other, Homer is trying his out on his roommates. Homer is starting to show some real attitude. He'll need every ounce of it when he's returned to the clan. Come, boys, come. Morning, guys. Hey, what are you doing? Are you uh, hurting the cubs again, you naughty thing? Eh? Eh? I think it's time. I think it's time for you to go and to meet my friend. Eh? It's time for Homer to try his teeth out on the stuff they were designed for. Well known for their scavenging behavior, hyenas are also skilled hunters. First things first, Homer has to get used to meat. It's a meat, my boy. Look, taste it, taste it. I promise you, you what, just have one bite. You'll enjoy it. Hey, he just sniffed it and ran away. That's unbelievable. This is the first hyena I've ever come across that actually does a lot of meat. And take, take three. And he comes in, he grabs the meat, he chucks it out the bowl. He says, Dad, what are you giving me here? This is terrible. Oh, man. Come back. Hey. Come back. This most basic Jesus, carnivore behavior isn't coming away. naturally to young Doesn't Homer. Doesn't want his meat. Doesn't want his meat. Come on. Come on, homie. I think we've got a vegetarian hyena here. I was also a late bloomer. I only gave up my bottle at about four. So <laughs> maybe he's taking off the dad. Today, three-month-old brothers Bongo and Tika have left the security of their nursery. It's their first day in a new outside play area. We're too sniffing. We're too sniffing. Now We're both sniffing. boasting their spotty coats, it's getting difficult to tell Tika from Bongo. It's actually quite incredible. He's gone from this chocolatey brown color to the speckled spotty coat of the spotted hyena. And when they actually run towards you, you've got to stop and think, well, which one's which? In the wild, Cubs this age start leaving the den for short periods of exploration. For these two, it's no different. Being hand-raised means growing up away from the social life of the clan. Just you guys are getting heavy. Woo. I'm out of breath. They're going into the lion's den. Socializing with the lion cubs will teach the brothers how to interact with other animals. Here we go. Whereas Homer needed the lion cubs for playmates, Bongo is about to get a lesson in anger management. <laughs> With old Bongo always dominating Tika, suddenly now he's not the toughest guy on the block. And uh, these guys here who are slightly bigger and slightly heavier than him, and they possess weapons. Big weapons. <laughs> Life with the lion cubs is all good news for Tika. but not necessarily for Kevin. <laughs> but a few claw marks is a small price to pay for such a successful strategy. And this is pretty cool because these little guys, these little lion cubs, ugh, you little horrible lion cubs, that's what you are. These guys have pretty much toned down Bongo and Tika's behavior. The lion cubs role is critical in preparing the brothers for life in the adult clan where strict hierarchy keeps everyone in their place. Yep. It's time for six-month-old Homer to understand a critical life skill, competing for food. He will need to know how to claim his share when he's returned to the clan. He's got to see meat as something that he's got to fight for. And if he doesn't get that into his head now, he's uh, not going to fit in. Kevin takes a novel approach to encourage Homer's interest in meat. But uh, this is stimulating to the brain. It triggers the instincts, and it's really good fun. With a heart twice the size of a lion's, adult hyenas have incredible stamina. Reaching speeds of up to 35 miles an hour, they have the ability to chase their prey for hours. 
they get together in packs and they run down their prey. Eventually when the prey is so tired it actually can't do anything about it, they latch on, grab it by the throat, grab it by the ribs, and pull it down. Their powerful shoulders, neck and jaw muscles make them formidable hunters. Feeding time is when clan hierarchy becomes most apparent. High-ranking females feed first, chasing lower ranks from the carcass. Homer's sister Marge is now joining the clan for a small nibble. Because she's Uno's daughter, she's allowed to eat at the, the meal. And she will come in before anyone. And in fact, she'll get cheeky with them. She'll put a little tail up, hair in the neck up, and actually go for them. Kevin hopes to teach Homer some of that confidence. If he wants his dinner, Kevin's going to make him work for it. It seems Homer's having no trouble picking up on that idea. This is really great because this is the first time old Homer has actually had a taste of a chunk of meat. There's a reward in Kevin's perseverance. Finally, Homer is eating meat. Each milestone mastered means a step closer to returning Homer to his clan. I think it's going to be very difficult um, the day that eventually does come when we have to put him back with the other guys and maybe take a little bit of a back step and let him uh, fend for himself because he's always been under that dad's protective wing. But little does Kevin know that Homer is about to undergo his biggest challenge yet. The very next morning, Kevin's world turns upside down. In the early hours, staff at the park check on Homer and discover something seriously wrong. I've just received a call from one of my staff members um, about 10, 20 minutes ago that uh, Homer is catatonic. He's just lying there in a, in a lump of flesh and he's not moving. He's unconscious and the only thing is his eyes are barely blinking, so he's rushed to come into the vet, and that's where I'm on my way to now. For Kevin, this nightmare is just beginning. At the clinic, Homer is about to undergo an exploratory examination. The way I'm feeling at the moment is a little bit apprehensive because as well as I know hyena, this sort of thing doesn't happen. But in the same um, instance, I'm thinking hyenas are tough, so try not to worry because I think he's going to, he'll be okay. As Kevin arrives, Homer is still critically ill. It seems he may have swallowed some sort of poison. He's not looking good, madam, if you want to come through and see him. Claire, the vet, prepares Kevin for the worst. Two hours later, and Homer has been put on a drip to hopefully stabilize his condition. All Kevin can do is wait. Little homie, he really, he means the world to me, and I just love that little guy. He's, every time, you know, if you come to work in the morning, you see that little hyena you know, check you out, it's, yeah, there's no better feeling. So he's an amazing little creature. Love him to bits. Kevin desperately needs to find out what Homer may have ingested. He makes a call back to the lion park to see if anything suspicious has been found in his enclosure. Uh, if there's any blankets or cloths or... But nothing unusual is found by the staff. Time is running out for Homer. Later that afternoon, Kevin is given the news he's been dreading. Homer has died. The following days are tough as Kevin waits for the autopsy results and tries to come to terms with losing Homer. When the autopsy results finally arrive, they don't shed any light on Homer's mystery killer. Just said, uh, conclusion, systemic poisoning, probably due to a heavy metal. Now that's doesn't cut it for me because to this day it still just doesn't make sense as to why this animal died. It's very 
you said to sit here and think now of all the great things I had planned for Homer? I see a little Marge and I see, you know, what Homer would sort of look like and obviously the realisation is that he's never going to be a part of that clan again and that was, you know, what I'd hoped for. Homer was really like a son to me, I think. He, uh, he was going to be the ambassador of all ambassadors for hyenas. And, yeah. I don't think in my lifetime I'm going to have a little hyena that's going to replace that character just come around one in a million. The weeks ahead will be difficult as Kevin adjusts to life without Homer. Look at that. Since Homer died, brothers Bongo and Tika have been cared for by Helga. Yes. Full of mischief today. Yeah. Kevin nice. is struggling just, to move on. I think I have pulled back in the raising of Bongo and Tika, not in commitment, but in the raising of them. Always in the back of my mind is what happened to Homer, and I don't want it to happen to Bongo and Tika. His reluctance to get too close to these cubs means they're missing out on some much needed discipline. A few weeks ago, the lion cubs were the bosses of this playground, but not any longer. Now the brothers have started ganging up on the older and bigger lion cubs. Kevin senses a change in the intensity of their play. As the aggression gets out of control, Kevin is forced to take action. What's your problem? Eh? What's your problem? What's your problem? What is your problem? What's your problem? Then, something magical happens. Despite his intentions, Kevin just can't resist these naughty hyena cubs. They've got incredibly cute characters, and uh, although I've tried to distance myself from them, uh, it's kind of hard not to get involved. After all that's happened, Bongo and Tika finally have Kevin back. Now too rough for the lion cubs, there are some big changes ahead for the brothers. They desperately need a family, one that can handle their rowdy ways. What are you doing, Nori? Kevin has some likely candidates in mind. In an enclosure separated from the main clan are three special hyenas. Known affectionately as the misfits, they bear the scars of being the lowest ranking males in the female dominated clan. Drilly, Ajip, and Henry are the three misfits of the hyena clan. And what actually happened was the clan continually harassed the three of them until eventually we had to take them out and, and separate them into a new enclosure. For me, the most logic solution to Tika and Bongo's dilemma is with uh, those three hyenas, because eventually we can actually put some females with them and form a new clan. Over the next few months, the cubs will get to know the misfits through the safety of the fence. If the misfits sense no threat, Bongo and Tika will join them in forming a new clan. The signs that would worry me are typically a low posture, hair in the neck up, and uh, aggressive tail, which is right the way up. And obviously a lot of vocalizing. But membership is not automatic. It has to be earned. Since birth, Bongo's been the dominant cub, and he's not about to give it up. His frenzied whooping and tail raising are signs of misplaced bravado and could lead to trouble. So yeah, I told him. He's going to be a. Can I talk? Bongo is going to be a formidable creature when he's older. He's got. He's not scared of anything. 
It's unbelievable. These guys are actually thinking, gee, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Yo, he's got a lot of heart. For now, the adults are powerless to put Bongo in his place. So long as he's on this side of the fence, he's safe. We've really got to, you know, make a bold decision as to when and how we actually put these little guys with the, with the bigger guys. I really just don't want to be responsible for a little hyena getting his ear ripped off or his back bitten so severely that I've got to take him to the vet. No. After today's feisty display, Kevin decides he'll delay the next meeting until the cubs are a little more mature. Okay, let's go. Woo. Six weeks later, and Kevin is feeling nervous about today's through the fence meeting. I think, again, we're gonna have a bit of aggression from Bongo. He's a little bit more uh, cocksure, he's a little bit older, and how it's gonna go, I really don't know. <laughs> Another dominant display from Bongo could shatter Kevin's dream of giving the Cubs the family they so badly need. All eyes are on bossy little Bongo. But he approaches the misfits with none of the aggression of last time. His low tail position signals he's no threat. A lot more relaxed. Um, it's kind of what I hoped for. At the moment all the tails are down. No noise. A little bit of talking every now and again. Everyone seems to be relaxed. These are good signs. In two months' time, the Cubs will go through their ultimate test when they enter the Misfits' territory. From past experience, Kevin knows only too well the risk involved. One introduction can go totally smooth, and the next one, we've got hyenas being bitten severely on the back. So you just never know how these things are going to go. With Kevin's love and care, eight-month-old Bongo and Tika have grown into strong, confident young hyenas. Today is the day they will join the misfits. Life will never again be the same for the brothers or for Kevin. It's an exciting time, uh, also a bit of a bittersweet moment because uh, it's, it's kind of the last I'm going to have of Bongo and Tika together to myself. Soon, Kevin must stand back and watch as his babies make their way in the unpredictable world of hyenas. Over at the Misfits enclosure, there's already a sense of the occasion. Everyone is alert and on edge. Come on. I'm feeling a little bit nervous and apprehensive about the whole thing. However, I know it's one of these things in life that's got to happen, but the outcome and could be disastrous. We could end up with a, a death on our hands. The plan is to first let the cubs into a satellite cage beside the misfits. Once Kevin is confident that all hyenas are relaxed, he will let Bongo and Tika join the misfits. The calm atmosphere is encouraging. Now, Kevin must make the critical decision. And these guys are my little, my little babies, and uh, <laughs> so I'm almost like reluctant to let them go into this big world here, yeah? because these guys can do a little bit of damage if they really want to. It's now or never. I really don't know where Bongo and Tiko will fit into this little hierarchy. I wouldn't mind them fitting in anywhere, as long as they fit in. The moment of truth has arrived. Right from the word go, Bongo is the center of attention. Kevin can no longer protect him. The much bigger misfit seems keen to put the little hyena firmly in his place. Getting a little bit uh, rowdy, a lot of neck biting, however, no blood being drawn yet, which is a good sign. So I think he's more, look, I'm second in command here, and don't you muck with that. I'm going to enforce my position early on. But Bongo's confident reaction is a sign that one day he'll be at the top of this hierarchy. Bongo actually just exudes uh, an air about him that says, I'm confident. I know my status. 
Instead, attention turns on Tika. When the hyena sniffs him or grabs him, he acts in a way uh, that would say I'm a little bit intimidated. And that's, that's what they thrive on. Hey, no, Henry! Kevin can only watch helplessly as Tika goes through this harsh initiation. Well, I tell you, it's, it's, this is an extremely difficult situation for me at the moment because every time one of them bites my baby's on the neck, I'm going to come in here and blick some him and show who, who's the dominant male in this clan. But this battle for dominance is strictly hyena business. You've got to let nature take its course. There's going to be a fair amount of this uh, neck biting and ear pulling. And uh, the sooner it's over, I think it's going to be the better for them. Today has been tough for the cubs, but they've survived their first step into clan life. You know these days are, are coming when you've got to actually give your children back or, or let them go on their own. So with that, that said, I'm, I'm really happy. By the end of the week, the new clan looks like it's been together forever. There's no doubt Bongo and Tika have finally found their place amongst their own kind. I think my relationship with Bongo and Tika is not going to be as intimate as it was uh, when they were on their own. However, they do form part of a, a clan of six. And I say six because I see myself as a member. Um, we've got a, a clan situation where we all know each other, we're all great friends, and we're going to continue the good name of hyenas out there. Thanks to Kevin's dedication, spotted hyenas are discarding their lowly image as the world begins to see them as intelligent, fearless predators who've earned their place on the African plains.